What I want to do right now is I want to make a short video regarding cost of goods sold and how to determine it in a periodic inventory system. So as we've talked about before, there's actually two different types of inventory systems. There's a perpetual inventory system and then there's also a periodic inventory system. Under a perpetual inventory system, the cost of goods sold is actually within the system. It's included within the system. So usually it's a computerized system that tracks how much it costs to sell, for example, that t-shirt that you sold for $10. What was the actual cost of it? So if you have a computerized system that tracks the sale as well as the uh, cost of goods sold, that's going to be a perpetual inventory system. So, and we're really, the society is really going towards perpetual inventory systems because of computing power is becoming less and less expensive. But smaller businesses, uh, businesses without a lot of transactions, they will use a periodic inventory system. And with a periodic inventory system, at the time of the sale, you just record the sale, but you don't record the reduction of inventory. It's, a, it's only at the end of the period, hence the word periodic, that the, um, that the journal entry to record the cost of goods sold is actually made. So the, the way to calculate what cost of goods sold is under a periodic inventory system is your beginning inventory. You start off with beginning inventory plus your purchases. And that gives you something called goods available for sale. And then from the goods available for sale number, you subtract out your ending inventory. And what you're left with when you, when you do this, you get your cost of goods sold. So if you're trying to determine cost of goods sold under a periodic inventory system, you take your beginning inventory, you take, uh, add to the beginning inventory your purchases. That gives you a number called goods available for sale minus your ending inventory. That gives you cost of goods sold. Now, that's kind of a, a hard thing to kind of understand. So, um, and a lot of students are just kind of, wow, that's a lot of information. I really don't know if I understand it. So the way that I like to think about it is a Twinkies example. So one of the ways that I go out and I study is I actually, I, I, I basically don't do any work during the semester. And it's only at the end of the semester what ends up happening is I actually go and I basically um, um, put myself into a room and do nothing other than study and eat uh, and, and drink coffee. So the thing that I eat, the only thing I eat is Twinkies and I just drink coffee. So if you can just imagine for the whole semester when I'm studying as a student, I don't do anything. And then the last, you know, 72 hours, all I do is study, eat Twinkies, and drink coffee. And that's just, that's just how it happens. That's what, what I end up doing. So um, I'm looking to see, you know, if I have enough Twinkies to hold me out for 72 hours. Um, what I'll do is I'll look to see how many Twinkies I have in my pantry. And I open up my pantry and I say, oh, I have, 10 Twinkies, right? So 10, 10 Twinkies. I said, well, 10 Twinkies are not going to cut it for 72 hours worth of studying. So I go to Walmart and I buy Twinkies. I buy 10 boxes, 10 boxes of Twinkies. Each box has 10 in them. So I go to Walmart and buy 100 Twinkies, okay? And so I have 10 Twinkies. I go to Walmart, buy another 100 Twinkies, 10 boxes of 10, and I put them in the pantry and then I start my studying routine, right? So then I, I went to Walmart and I bought 100, uh, 100 Twinkies. So I had a 10 in the beginning, then I went out to Walmart, bought, a, bought 100. So that means I had 110 Twinkies available for me to eat. So then once I go out and I, I start doing my work and I start doing everything and I get really involved in my studying and I eat Twinkies, drink coffee, drink, and there's Twinkies all over the place. And um, I go take my exam. I get back from my exam after doing this big study quest. And I said, you know, I'm never going to do this again. My house is a mess. There's Twinkie wrappers all over the place. And so then I ask, well, how many Twinkies did I actually eat during that 72 hour study session? And one of the ways I could go around doing it is I could count all the Twinkie wrappers, right? 
The other thing that I could do is I could go into my pantry and see that I only have 20 Twinkies left in the pantry, right? So this would be my ending number. So if the, my beginning number is 10 plus my purchases gave me 110 Twinkies available to eat and I subtract out my ending inventory, right? Uh, that would give me, that would tell me that I ate, what, 90 Twinkies, right? And so that's a very easy concept to understand. Now, with this 90 Twinkies, did I eat all those 90 Twinkies? Well, I've got a dog. You might have heard the dog in the video. The dog's barking. The dog could have eaten the Twinkies, so the dog could have stolen a Twinkie. I've got a, you know, a 20-plus-year-old daughter who, who lives in the house. Uh, she could have stolen the Twinkies. There's all kinds of different things that could have happened to those Twinkies. So, but this Twinkies is my cost of goods so sold or my cost of goods stole, right? Because those Twinkies could have either been eaten or stolen by other members of the family. So, uh, again, it's, uh, so the calculation for f figuring out cost of goods sold from a uh, periodic inventory system is you take your beginning inventory plus your purchases, that gives you goods available to sell. Then you subtract out your ending inventory to give you your cost of goods sold, okay? So anyway, hopefully that helps. We'll go over it again in class. Uh, and and if, you, if you have questions, by all means, come, come and see me afterwards. Thanks.